this on ship tutorial uh, I will teach you how to create a simple chair shape like this all in one part okay so this is, this is not an assembly so this is probably the most basic way of creating a shape like this all right so from on ship you should have created yourself a folder if you remember from other tutorials so I would for this project I would create a folder called chair designs for example and I'd be in here and you create a new document inside so I'm going to call this chair 2 because I've done this be my second chair now this is more of a bench than a chair park bench so sketch tool I'm going to sketch under the front upright work plane I'm going to turn around so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the corner rectangle tool here. Start from the center always and just click and then enter the values. So I'm going to enter for the depth of the chair. I'm going to enter about 550. Uh, press enter. And now I'm going to enter the height of the bottom part of the chair to be about 450. Okay, so this is the basic, the bottom part of the chair. And the backrest will start here and come up this way. Uh, but before I create that, I want to add some more details down here. So use the sketch fillet tool, click on this line, then choose on that line, which meet at the, this intersection. And I will create a fillet. This is quite a small fillet. I want to make it bigger than that, so just double click on the measurement that appears, enter 100. So it, end, so it basically rounds off the corner. Do the same down here, and then the same over here. Oh, sorry. Do, do it again while you're still in the same tool. Remember to move away and just left click once on the mouse. When I've got the three corners of the fillet, I don't want to do it here, which you will see why in a few minutes. Once I've got the shape, I want to use the offset tool. So I'll click on offset, and I'm gonna just move around on the outside of this sketch and select all the lines. And here, just drag it in a bit more, go back to it. And we're gonna set that, so by double clicking on the measurement, I'm gonna set that to 80. So you can see I've got now a curve here, curve here, curve here. Not here, but I want to add one. So let's move into the fillet tool. Select that line and that line. That's too big, I want it to be similar to these. I believe these are about 20. Yep, that was correct. So roll back a little bit. This time, line tool. I'm going to make the length of this line. Just draw it up at an angle. We will set the angle in a minute. But I'm going to draw it to be 400. Again, you need to know the dimensions for your specific chair or bench. Um, so if we research and from the design stage, you should really have worked out your sizes by now. Yeah? You can change the sizes. You may realize when you draw them here, they're not correct. You can change the sizes. You can change the shape of your chair. You can further develop it. So further develop your final design as you draw it in CAD. You may find some parts of your own design are just not possible to draw on CAD or too difficult. So simplify it, change it if necessary. So I'm going to draw it here. That's going to be the same thickness as the bottom part, so 80. So, yeah, so I want this distance to be the same as this distance. I'm going to draw a line back down now. You will see with this software that when I move it and it becomes parallel, so this line which I'm drawing now becomes parallel to this line, you'll see that it highlights. Do you see that? So this line highlights in orange when it's parallel. So just move it until you get this and click once. I don't want to draw another line from here, so just click Escape and then use the Trim tool to trim that and that. And that is the side piece or a side sketch of your chair. All right. 
So again, these dimensions you decide. All right. Uh, that's the sketch, I think. That's all the parts done for now. That will do this time. So accept that sketch. And now you're back into the feature tools. So what I want to do is click on extrude. I want to select this. I'm leaving the center of the hollow. I'm going to make it about 40 mil thick. All right, again, you should have a good idea of proper sizes from your research, your product analysis. You should have worked out rough sizes. Try it out. If it doesn't look correct, change it. And that's the first extrusion, which looks right. So accept that. That's it. Uh, I'm now going to use the fillet tool in the extrusion sentence, or the feature sentence. So I'll go to fillet. Selector. Remember to get yourself a mouse with a rollerball. It will be much faster. Click on 30, press enter, and accept. So now I've got a rounded off edge here. It looks okay. -ish. Maybe I can go back into that and change the sentence again. Let me bring it a bit smaller, see what it looks like. Yeah. Get into your own personal taste of what you want to see visually. I'm going to add a fillet here. Quite a large fillet. Let's try something like 300. See what happens. Mm, even bigger. And here. Looks fine to me. Remember, I can always go back in later and change these by simply right clicking on these fillets. Remember, it records all the different features you create over here in the side menu. Uh, right, so now what we will do. It's like on sketch again, it'll turn it around and we create a sketch onto this surface. Uh, to do this, I will draw a, first of all, from here, we'll draw a rectangle. Let's enter 100 long by 20. So we know that's in line with that. And we will now use the dimension tool, which is over here. Set that distance. So let's set that to 30. Uh, and now what we'll do is we'll use another tool called the pattern tool. Yeah, because we want to have three of these. I want another two rectangles over here. So besides this tool called the transform tool, choose the little drop down arrow and choose linear pattern. I'm going to select that. And you will see. It, you can see it's recreated a series of two over, I think, two over rectangles of the same size. You can see some dimensions appear here. You see three here, you see 25 here. So that's the distance between this line and the back of the next rectangles trying to create. So let's just double click on that 25 and change it to say 120. Hit enter and you can see it's created. I do want three. If I wanted to create more or less, I can just change this number. And if I want a bigger distance apart or more of them, yeah, but I only want three. So let's keep it on three. If I wanted to make this, dif this distance different, obviously this is then 100 plus 20 plus 100 plus 20. So that's why it's 120. It's a distance from here to the next rectangle. So you want to have a space between here. And for example, just to show you, we don't want this, but just to show you this this measurement here, or this number, one times, if I click on that and enter five, you'll see it creates five vertical, five more rows of rectangles vertically up. And again, I can change that distance between them by clicking on this dimension. So that's why it gets a bit confusing sometimes, you have to scroll in to see the, what measurements you're actually choosing. Okay, but I don't want that. So let's just go back to one. 
and that's what I want for the time being. Uh, so let's just accept that, left click on the mouse. And I would do three up here as well. So for this, again, different ways of doing this. I'm going to start anywhere. I'm going to draw a line down. I'm going to make that 100. And then I'm going to use the offset tool here. Click on that. And I'm going to drag it out. I'm double click on that number. So I get a dimension and make it 20. So it's the same size as these rectangles down here, but obviously at an angle which is parallel to that, or close to the same angle as that. Uh, right, so finish that off. Don't know what these little dots are, so I'll just try and get rid of them. Just come out of that tool, press and escape. Doesn't seem to be disappearing, so I'll just stay with it. Actually, it's done something odd here, so I'm just going to go back. Remember, you have undo, so you can just go back. If you think there's something wrong or you've made a mistake, yeah, you've got multiple undos. That's the great thing about the software. So that looks okay now, so let's just do that. Right, so that's one. I'm going to escape again, press escape to come out of the tool you're presently in. I'm going to select around it and I'm going to go to command C and command V. So it creates a duplicate. Uh, don't start pulling on these or moving this, just basically accept it by left clicking. And then you want to move it. Let's select it all again, sorry. Make sure it's all selected and simply left click and drag and move it so it looks roughly in the correct, correct place. What we can do now is use the dimension tool again. Measure from here to here. So you get that dimension and make that <clears throat> a more sensible distance from the edge. Same. Yeah, you don't want to have measurements like that where it's 22.92009. There's no point in that. So 25 is a more. And then we know that's also in line with that. Uh, we can do another one. So command C, Command V, left click. So you've accepted it. And then select all the lines by holding on the shift key, then move it into rough location. Dimension tool again, it's lots of dimensioning to make sure it's in the right place. If it's in a curve, it's hard to get a measurement. You want it to be the same position, so move up until you get the same edge, which these rectangles are measured from. And let's drag it down to show that. And again, 25. Last few dimensions between here and here. You want it to be the same. doesn't look a bad distance. I could measure it, but because it's a curve, I can measure from that point maybe. So let's measure it, let's have a look. Dimension tool, let's go to that point and that point. And let's make it 10 mil from there. Just makes it a bit neater if all dimensions are done properly. Okay, doesn't look too bad a gap here. Maybe a little bit too slow back for a park bench, so the angle may have not been correct at the beginning. So that's the sort of thing you need to have worked out by now. Right, but let's just have a go anyway. So let's look down here, one last, couple last things. I want to add, let's get this point drill down from here. I want to add two circles, which you will see in a minute. Will make sense once we extrude everything. See that? So your guidelines to tell you it's in line with this and it's in line with that.
Okay, so accept all those sketches. So all these parts are drawn in one sketch. The first sketch was for the shape of the chair, and then all these other parts are in sketch two. There shouldn't be multiple sketches here. Right? So be careful that you may need to start again if you find all these objects are in different sketches. So accept that sketch. And extrude. So I'm simply going to select the objects I want to extrude. Remember Lin, so you know where you're selecting is the proper area. By default, it extrudes to 25. So similar, we'll extrude it to its bench. So then the bench can be, well, it can be lots of different lengths, but you can decide again from your research, what do you want it to be? I'm going to make it 750 because the bench is actually one and a half meters, which is 1500. Why am I only doing it half? You will find out in a second. So accept that. And then simply, I can finish it off by using the mirror tool. Just another tool I want to show you. Many different ways of creating the shape, but that's the entities to mirror is all this. So if I click on it, and it says part one. So part one is the whole object. Mirror plane, click on it, so you know you're inside that selection box. Move over and select the middle plane you want to reflect it around that plane. And that's it. Accept it. And you got it. Right. So obviously you could have made that only a shorter distance to simply make it a chair. You can change the shape. Yeah, it doesn't have to be three parts, it could be one solid piece. Alright. Um, in the next tutorials you will learn how to do shapes like this in different ways, or other types of the chairs, and you'll also learn how to do an assembly. Really, you're aiming to get your chair put together as an assembly, which you learned in the other tutorials with the toy truck. All right, can be done like this, but it's just less complex. And um, the using assembly tools demonstrates more technical skills for criteria C. Okay, thank you.